Returning samples collected from the surface of Mars back to Earth has been a high priority goal for the past few years. A random sample would have been interesting, but surveying specific areas chosen for their high probability of fossilized life is positively tantalizing and could answer all the big questions that motivated mankind to explore Mars in the first place. But how will these rock samples be brought back to Earth? Welcome to Fact Nominal. Today, we're bringing back space souvenirs in how Mars rock samples will be brought back to Earth. A collaboration of 71 scientists and the international scientific community came together to define specific objectives and methods for a successful Mars sample return mission. There are criteria that need to be met for choosing the sample, as well as critical measurements and tests to be done once it's here on Earth. These red rocks are a big deal, and it's imperative we get the right rocks that carry all the key information needed to maximize our understanding of Mars, and whether it once hosted organic life. The plan. There are three main phases to this plan. Sample collection, containment and transfer, and return transport and quarantine. The mission architecture will support three separate launches with bespoke machines to complete each specific task. The multi-staging approach allows flexibility in the schedule to allow for any unforeseen setbacks or missed milestone dates. A successful Mars sample return mission would pave the way for developing the landing system for the Mars Science Laboratory currently in development, avoiding the time and costs associated with developing and testing another method. Sample Collection Phase 1 is well and truly underway. The Perseverance is the marvel of engineering, carrying 43 titanium tubes in its belly that will eventually bring home evidence about Mars's ancient past, and if life once teemed on its swampy surface. These sample tubes will be 100% sterile and free from any bacteria of earthly origin to ensure the validity of the samples. The Jezero crater site was chosen as it's believed to have once been a thriving delta fed by rivers. It's logical that the clay sediment would be the best chance to look for microbial life that may have once flourished in its waters. The tubes are less than 6 inches long and will be painted white to reflect the sun's rays and prevent unnecessary heating of the samples. Overall, 60 different dimensions were scrutinized, and if just one was off by the thickness of a human hair, the tube was deemed to not pass quality control, and as such, not suitable to board the flight. The average thumbprint carries 45,000 nanograms of organic compounds. However, only 1 300th of this volume is considered tolerable to be contained within each tube. For there to be no false positives in the search for life, there has to be less than 15 nanograms of Earth-based organic compound in the tubes. Zero is preferred, but almost impossible. 9 cubic inches of pristine Jezero crater substrate will fill 38 of the tubes, roughly equivalent to the size of a piece of a blackboard chalk, courtesy of a state-of-the-art coring drill at the end of the Perseverance's robotic arm. There will be five tubes to act as witness or controls that have been loaded with materials to capture molecular and particulate contaminants. These control tubes will be opened one at a time on Mars to capture a screenshot of the ambient environment around primary collection sites to be later used as a comparison to catalog any earthly impurities in the other samples. After collection, the tubes will be laid out by the Perseverance to be collected by a future Mars mission. Containment and Transfer The devil's in the details, or in this case, the packaging. The Mars sample return container needs to keep the integrity of the sample uncontaminated as well as prevent any potentially harmful substances from contacting the astronaut crew or researchers here on Earth. American astronomer Dr. Carl Sagan famously said that if we could make such a container, why not put anthrax germs inside of it, launch it into space, and then return it in the exact same way a Mars return capsule would? The container could then be taken to a containment facility to assess how well the planetary protection protocols worked. It was thinly veiled sarcasm at best. NASA will instead use what they call the Orbiting Sample Approach. A new and as yet unnamed Martian lander will be delivered in the vicinity of the Jezero Crater, where the Perseverance will have been busy collecting its core samples before laying the canisters of cached material out behind it. This lander will carry a NASA rocket-powered Mars Ascent vehicle, 
as well as a European Space Agency-designed Sample Fetch rover, about the same dimensions as the car-sized Perseverance. This rover will be tasked with locating and fetching all the sample-containing tubes laid out across the Martian landscape, and carry them back to the lander. It's the same concept as your favorite furry friend sniffing out buried bones before bringing them back to the porch. Once the mission is complete, the Mars Ascent vehicle will carry the sample container up away from the surface by using its attached rocket to break free of the Martian atmosphere. From there, the sample container will detach, allowing the container to orbit the red planet. With any luck, a manned or potentially unmanned spacecraft will be ready in orbit around Mars before this happens ready to capture and contain the sample container before returning it back to Earth. The whole process is reminiscent of throwing a basketball through a hoop, only this time the hoop is moving at the same speed as the basketball to give it a soft landing. Return Transport Once on board, the sample container will enter a biocontainment system befitting its unsterilized and possibly contaminated contents. The nature of such a system is uncertain at this point, as it's whether an unmanned probed or longer manned mission will be the vehicle of the sample's return to Earth. The Artemis lunar missions will test new technology in the field, the success of which will directly affect the timetable of the manned Mars mission. At this stage, NASA is leaning towards an Earth return orbiter, which will be launched in tandem with the Mars return lander. The Mars sample return mission is a huge undertaking, and even though Phase 1 is off and running, the rest of the mission is constantly being improved and assessed as new technologies become available. Likewise, the logistics for the return of samples back to Earth and the mechanics of landing them safely through the atmosphere are still up in the air. Quarantine and Certification NASA will start building their Level 4 Biohazard Containment Facility well before any Martian samples are returned to Earth. The containment during transit is only one piece of the puzzle, as the samples will need to enter strict quarantine protocols from the moment they are removed from the spacecraft until the laboratory within the containment facility receives them. There will need to be passive fail-safes in the event that the monitoring system detects any breaches prior to entering the Earth's atmosphere. There should be plans in place to sterilize the samples en route should a breach occur while in Earth's atmosphere. The lab will employ a primary containment chamber that utilizes a negative pressure gradient to help prevent egress of gas from the samples, and secondary containment measures such as HEPA-filtered air, personal showers, and wastewater sterilization for the lab proper. From there, a third set of protocols will outline how the tubes are opened in the lab, as well as handling of the Martian material contained inside. The sample and witness tubes eventual return to and examination on Earth will allow the full breadth of terrestrial science laboratory capabilities to investigate the samples using instruments too large and complex to send to Mars. Analysis from these instruments will determine whether samples are sufficiently safe to be distributed to other labs for study. If living entities or non-fossilized parts of Martian organisms are contained in the return samples, tissue cultures and cell lines will be manufactured for tests. Whole organisms will not be used for testing, as the potential for toxic effects, infectivity, and ecological disruption to the outside environment is too much of a risk. This laboratory will almost certainly mimic any you've seen in Hollywood blockbusters like Species, Life, and the Andromeda Stream. Hazmat suits, specimen containers with pierce-proof gloves, and a likely wildfire-type protocol in the form of an emergency kill button to immediately destroy the sample. It's life imitating fiction.